Good morning, ladies. Guys, have a good day, okay? Hello and welcome to my channel. Hey, this is Juanita. Today, I'm going to be trimming my butterfly tree. I've had some questions about that and what I do to take care of it, so I'm gonna touch up on that. As you can see, it's done blooming uh, and it's getting pretty sparse as far as the leaves. I don't believe it loses it's entire leaves, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But yeah, so I'm going to be trimming this back and uh, getting it ready for a uh, winter because we are headed that way. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. Had me down for the count. I was on that. Took control, but now I'm gone. Bye bye, bring the fire. You took something beautiful and made it something cruel. It's all that I get from you. You're so delusional. Now watch me take control. I've been running, running from myself like I'm somebody else. Kind of left me alone. I ended up cleaning up way more than I was ever expecting. The chicken coop will be a lot more exposed than I normally leave it for the winter, but it needed to be done. And uh, between the ivy and the rose bushes up there, uh, there's just stuff I need to take out of there. And uh, I didn't get all the debris out of it because leaves have a lot of nutrients to it so um, I'm gonna leave some of them I did take out a lot of it but I'm gonna leave some of them I'm gonna take you up there so you can get a peek of what it looks like up there so in the springtime it is so gorgeous up there when all the succulents are in bloom and starting to grow now I do have a video with that so I will link that up there I think I'm allergic to the pollen in this tree in this butterfly tree because I <clears throat> it keeps getting in my throat so but you know not breathing it all the time it's beautiful so 
I'm happy to have it. So I'm going to take you up. So as you can see, I'm on top of the runner here. And uh, we do have a gutter. Needs cleaning, but, you know, it's still drained, so I leave it alone. And there's the top of my chicken coop. Not very pretty right now because it is fall. And um, so, as you can see, I did leave a few little leaves and stuff. It does need to desperately get dirt up there. There, I noticed that there's some... Uh, well, let me just take you completely up there. But now you can see, you can see my only rooster that I can have in the city. Oh, there's my uh, hummingbird just flew over. He's always coming by to say hello. So here we are at the top of it. And as you can see, there's some cracks. Uh, there's some cracks right, right here. And then there's some bare spots right there. So this dirt really is, like right here's the top of the roof. So the dirt is not more than that. I'm gonna leave that there, that little moth. So I do have some spots here that I need to add dirt to. Um, so I'll probably do that this year. Cause yeah, there's a, a few little crevices here that are happening and uh, it really just needs a lot more dirt. I may add some dirt and then wait for spring to completely redo this top of this roof. But there really isn't a lot of dirt up here. And I'm stepping on my succulents, but they're very resilient, so I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, I'm leaving a few little, no, no ivy leaf, that's for sure. But I'm leaving a few leaves here just to put the nutrients back into the ground here. Now I'll kind of step back a little bit and you can see. Like this succulent here has a few little uh, residuals of the blooms that it had. And this gets like a one big clump here. Uh, that one that's kind of sparse there. Um, it actually fills in. There's actually stuff growing in the center. I don't know if you can see that right there by the leaf. Uh, yeah. And then of course, again, right here, there's some spots that need to be filled in so yeah i just need to sprinkle some dirt up here uh, give it a little bit more insulation for the chickens as you see this succulents they have a little bit of flowers that they uh bloom i'm gonna go ahead and take these off i'm just gonna throw them there they can reseed right there yeah i've got a little bit cascading over so what I did is that I added the dirt and then I just put these um, stones here to keep it from falling down. And uh, that's, that's about it. Not a lot to it. And again, the rubber on top of this uh, is uh, like swimming pool lining. Just really thick lining and it's very durable. So this has been up probably seven years around that time. So yeah, it's still holding up pretty good. Now you can see my rooster. You couldn't see him because of all the foliage of the butterfly tree. Now if I could trim that big cherry tree up there and uh, do something to keep it from producing cherries, I'd be really happy. So now we're gonna go to the side yard. So. It's pretty messy. I'm gonna pre-warn you, it's pretty messy because of the high winds and the smoke and everything that threw a lot of stuff down. But uh, you know what? Overlook that. <laughs> so, yeah, so let's go. So what I am doing is I'm cutting a lot of these limbs uh, because they're just way too low. I mean, I'm pretty short and I can't get through this limbs of this, uh, butterfly tree and so I'm gonna be clearing a good portion of this out uh, I'm not hurting it by trimming it in this part of the, this time of the season which we are in October the beginning of October 
So we're not, I'm not hurting it by trimming it at this time. Um, off a lot of this uh, limbs off of from the lower part. And um, hopefully that'll give a lot of the nutrients to the limbs that are much higher. Okay, as you can see, hear that? Can you hear that? Let's see if I can move you over a little bit. This, this is how brittle this tree is. If I can break that, it's pretty brittle. So. so I'm just gonna break off a couple of these branches and uh, I'll clean this up with a little saw. So for now, as you can see right here, there's a lot of new growth. There's also new growth over over here. There's starting new growth. Uh, so yeah, there's a uh, new growth coming out right here as well as right up here so cutting off a few limbs is not going to make or break this uh tree it is as you can see it is a very very old tree but i'm doing it a favor <laughs> by cutting this one so i'm gonna get doing that so i'm gonna try trimming it right here and and then just kind of eyeball it I'll eyeball it and see if that's high enough. Uh, if not, then I'll probably take it back a little bit more. Now it's still blooming, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty much a done deal for the season. And I've also been asked, what do I do to my butterfly trees and to get them to bloom nothing I do nothing um, they're lucky if I water them uh, they get watered with the plants and so they do get some water but for the most part I really have not done anything so I'm gonna get with this When I go to trim them, see how you see this this uh, group right here, and right here, and right here? I'm going to take it down to here, because that'll give it a lot more room to grow. So if you're looking to uh, trim your butterfly tree, you'll kind of have an idea of how to trim it. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to claim to be an expert. This is just what I do, and it seems to work for me.
Now the reason why I left this limb, even though it's dead, is because this way if I want to plant something up here, then I can do that. This one actually can go. But yeah, that's why I can hang some flowers. This is how brittle this is. It's really a brittle tree. Oops, I guess I had that planted. bird right there. It's old. It's all I could use. Throwing away. <laughs> but yeah. And actually, I'm going to put it right there. So all those, although this one here looks dead, there's a lot of growth on it. So I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it alone. But yeah, it looks nice and clean now. Now, typically, I would <coughs> think I must have an allergy <coughs> to that. Um, so typically, I would remove all these branches right here. and uh, But it would open it way up because the tree is going this direction into a V. <coughs> and so I'm going to leave it because... This way it shelters my more sensitive plants that are over here on this side. By keeping those limbs, it'll protect my Chinese lantern. And that's way back. It's not going to hurt it. These really are not that hardy. Uh, they're definitely not for zone six, which is what Portland is. Uh, but because I have an eave of the house above it that adds some shelter, as well as this uh, butterfly tree, it adds some shelter. And that's why I'm not removing those limbs, because it's also going to um, protect it as well. Now, I did cut a lot of those limbs that's going to maybe affect it in this direction, but it's lasted three years so far. This plant actually, you can take it all the way down, you know, about that much, you know, I don't know, three, four inches from the base of it. Uh, typically I don't do that, but uh, you can do that. This plant here is, is a, an evergreen clematis. It gets these, it gets filled with these uh, tiny, kind of like uh, the ja star jasmine. It gets a ton of bloom. Um, like this is, well, I don't have it. Like right here, this stems right here. I don't even know if you can see them, but uh, these were all the blooms and they kind of, I don't know if you can see that. But they get this little spike things and it has a lot of tiny white flowers and i tell you it, the smell is kind of like a sweet vanilla it is so fragrant um this year the, i've had this here for probably two three years and this is the first time it's actually really really bloomed um it can it does really well in the shade because this area does get quite a bit of shade I just put it here because I have a window here that uh, goes down to my laundry area and I just wanted to cover it up. So, yeah. So it looks like that's going to do it for me. Uh, as you can see, it is so cleared up here. These limbs here were, I would say, down to about right here. I don't know if they got weighed down from all the winds or uh, 
the rainfall that came shortly thereafter, you know, certainly the fires didn't uh, benefit it at all. But uh, it's all good now, and it's all the way cleared to the back. I will kind of give you a quick tour. Um, again, I wanted to kind of wanted to show you where I cut the butterfly tree. Uh, when I Google butterfly tree, I don't find anything with butterfly tree. I do find butterfly bushes, but they're all one and the same. They, some just tend to grow a lot bigger. Now, I don't know the species of this one, it's, but I'm sure it's not evasive, uh, but it's been here for over 13 years. There was three of them actually in the yard. There was a white one and a, and a, this one's kind of more like a purplish, and then I had a pink one. And so they come in a variety of colors, and all of them were very large. We ended up getting a really high wind one evening, and it blew two of them down. So I had to take, and they were in the backyard. So I had to take them down. Um, they were beautiful, but in a way they were a blessing because um, I don't know, the, the yard might have dictated a whole different layout had they still been there. But they were beautiful. Uh, one of them is where the chicken coop resides now. The other one was next to right over here by where the pergola is now. So the large pergola that is. But anyway, back to the butterfly tree or bush, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, when I go to trim this, uh, the branches here, I'll turn it around. But as you can see, I'll bring it real close. There's some growth here, here, and here. So I, if I was to trim during the summer months, once these have died off to promote more uh, flowering, I just snip it right there. And then, and I will probably snip it right here. But yeah, that's what I do. I do this at least, um, well, I do it as it, it needs it. Uh, because these are very fast growing. So, in my opinion, um, there's no right or wrong time to trim these. Um, I trim them several times a year. It just depends on how fast it's growing, how fast the branches are growing. Because um, it's only going to promote more uh, branches out this way. Now, this one will promote branches going this way, this way, and here. Now, if I was clipping it way, way back, I would do it to its good cluster there, and then I would clip it right above that. And so you still have quite a bit of a cluster there. Now, butterfly trees, bushes, whatever you want to call them, they prefer full sun. However, they apparently can tolerate um, shade because this whole area as you can see it's all shaded and it's and it's always like that and it was even more shaded prior to cutting down a huge tree that was in the forefront over here uh, by the gate uh, so and my plants have all thrived and this has certainly thrived without any issues uh, one thing that I do know about butterfly plants is that they don't like a lot of water. They don't like their feet wet and they don't like mulch because they don't like that moisture. So don't overwater your butterfly plants uh, or trees. I rarely ever water this one. So if you're gonna plant plants around a butterfly tree, I would suggest to plant things that are drought tolerant. Uh, that's my suggestion. Um, but yeah, enjoy them they're beautiful they they bring in butterflies they bring hummingbirds i haven't seen a lot of hummingbirds in this yard so i can't attest to that but that's supposedly supposed to be what they do uh i've only seen one hummingbird in my whole yard and i have tried feeders at the wazoo and 
um, until I started doing the, the work in the backyard, the pergola and stuff like that, I really never saw one. Uh, not because we didn't try, I just haven't seen them, but I don't know, got, got, a, got a new buddy there. So anyway, um, the clipper that I'm using, I love it. Uh, it's uh, called a Corona. I've had so many different types of uh, nippers and this by far has exceeded. And this is very old, as you can see, it's, <laughs> it's pretty rusted. Uh, and it's even even has some chips on it. I probably should sharpen that. Uh, but uh, it still works. Still works. The other thing I want to mention, as far as the Chinese lantern, I I'm not sure if they how well they do in direct sun. I have had mine in, in shade, and it's done really really well. The very first one one that I purchased didn't last. The following year through the winter months uh this one i've had like i said i i've had it for probably three years and it's still doing fine uh it's i feel that it's still pretty well protected because of the uh cherry tree up above me but outside of that uh i i don't have not had issues uh i do like well drain they like to be well in a drain well drained area I have mine in a pot and uh, again I have eaves on the top over here that are probably about a I don't know two two and a half feet wide so it does protect a lot of these plants so yeah so anyway uh, so anyway let me take you up to the front yard and then I'm gonna call it a day as you can see everything is trimmed way up there and I probably I probably could have trim those up there but uh they're okay they're not at my in my face so i'm good with that but now you can actually even see the top of my chicken coop as you can see everything on top of the chicken coop is cleaned up all the way, the butterfly tree, all the way back. It's got a clear path and uh, it's it's all really, really nice. I am really happy with it. And uh, so yeah, that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that I was able to pass on some knowledge and that uh, if you do have a butterfly tree or bush um, that you will enjoy it because they are beautiful so yeah anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did give me a like subscribe share it with your friends and family but more importantly get up get out get active and do something creative next love you i will see you on my next video